They're a wasted space. They're bloody useless. What good are they? Walk, stop the boats. Walk, stop the tax. Walk, stop the boats. <laughs> good bird grabber. Want a cracker grabber? Bankrupting the nation, selling us to China, bleeding us blind. It's all about taking jobs offshore, if you ask me. Importing Indian voices to take all our future cyber jobs. Mark my words, if you're working in front of a computer today, within two years you'll be replaced by an Indian with a fake Australian accent. It's a case of sheer incompetence and an inherent inability to successfully lead in an ever-changing, challenging world environment. I don't know, the Oda party aren't doing that bad a job. I'm not talking about the opposition, Bob. I'm talking about Julia Grillhard's Labour, Minority, Greens and other assorted nobody's government. In my considered opinion, the Labour government is absolutely hopeless. I ask you, Your Honour, what has the Labour government done for us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Walk, nothing. Walk, nothing. Walk, nothing. Yeah, yeah nothing. nothing. Labour were the first Western government to recognise Red China, and they did float the Australian dollar, introduced free trade and opened the Australian economy by removing tariffs. That's right. Labour also forced us to introduce the basic wage, continually forcing us to put up workers' wages and then gave us compulsory superannuation to secure their retirement. Plus, they gave compulsory health cover to every Australian citizen by introducing Medicare. Well, yes, OK, but apart from recognising Red China, floating the Australian dollar, cutting tariffs, introducing free trade, introducing superannuation and Medicare under past Labour governments... What has the current Labour government done for us? Nothing. They are a blight on our nation, absolutely worthless, totally incompetent and fiscally irresponsible. They've done nothing, nothing. That's right, Simon. They only got in by promising to get rid of work choices and now they've replaced it with Fair Work Australia, putting all our policies on hold. I didn't think we were allowed to have any policies. We're not now. That's what lost us the last election. But when we get back into power... Then we will reintroduce our plan to increase business profits by lowering wages and removing all those unnecessary workers' conditions and benefits. Under the Kevin Rudderless government, they did say sorry to the Aboriginal people. Simon, everyone knows what a useless gesture that was. Tricky D. Forrester had already fixed that historical problem. Now, no Aboriginal person is being stolen. In fact, under our future government, they will all be returned to their places of origin and be offered a job in the mines at a new special lower dispossessional rate. Remember too that despite our best efforts to stop them, they did somehow manage to bumble their way through the global financial crisis and save Australia from a recession. We really needed that recession, especially to punish all those that voted this government in and to show that the Oda government was the only one with the economic credentials to deal with the major financial problems. Didn't we get rid of Peter Costolotto? Remember, he was the only one who understood all that hard economic-sounding stuff. Surely you're joking, Stanley. Labour over the past five years might have taken a $130 billion yearly hit to their bottom line, but they blew our $20 billion surplus and raided our $70 billion wealth fund and went on a hysterical stimulus spending spree with their building an education revolution, upgrading every school, even the state schools, with additional classrooms and school halls. They put pink bats into millions of homes, which are now probably saving millions of families hundreds of dollars on rising electricity prices for heating and cooling. Thank God for our love of deregulated industries and the added assistance of poor state government oversight and supervision of those programs that they stuffed up just enough for us to avoid having to recognise the overwhelming success of their stimulus strategy. That's right. What GFC? It was only a flesh wound. <laughs> Remember, we've got to focus on the rip-offs, the shoddy operators, and blaming the waste on this government any time the success of these GFC initiatives gets a rare mention in the media. Thankfully, in my industry, they did act quickly to guarantee all bank deposits and bank loans and successfully protect 600,000 businesses by offering tax payment relief, preventing bankruptcy. There were 113,000 businesses that needed this government's support during the GFC. This dropped down to 41,000 by 2010, so that thousands of businesses remained solvent and workers kept their jobs. Plus, since then, there's been an additional 850,000 new jobs created just over the past five years. 
All right, so apart from the apology to the Aboriginal people, guaranteeing workers' rights by replacing work choices with Fair Work Australia, saving Australia from the worst aspects of the GFC and probable recession, saving 600,000 businesses from possible bankruptcy and creating an additional 850,000 jobs, what has this Labor government done for us? Nothing, right? Nothing. Walk nothing. Walk nothing. Walk nothing. Thanks, friends. I uh, would like first to make a, a few comments. Then uh, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to take questions. Now, a quick update. Remember that I am your leader. So if, if my great struggle to win power is to be successful, we need to follow exactly the political strategy outlined in our party manifesto to make the great mass of the population understand our campaign it must be directed against two objectives against a person and against a thing a against julia grillhard as a person and against the labor greens nobody minority government as a thing now good good job on your first protest uh, your, your convoy of the concerned got great media coverage, uh, particularly your cleverly targeted signage, uh, uh, Hang the Witch, Jew Liar, Bob the Greenies Bitch, although I don't know if gay blokes have bitches in the same way, but still, the public saw them all, all the personal attacks, and, and will remember them. A, a big tick for Objective One. Now, not, not a criticism, but, but the, the numbers of protesters looked a, a bit small. So thank God for my great mate Alan Jono's quick thinking. Uh, that, that saved us any embarrassment by, by inventing the, the police blockade outside Canberra, stopping our many thousands of supporters arriving in a truck convoy. So, so you mean we didn't have an army of thousand supporters choking the Hume Highway? Of course not, but how quick and cunning was that? Talk about making it up as you go. To tell you the truth, look, I, I know that's something I really do. However, I've never been very good at thinking on my feet. When, when I do, I usually end up with one or the other foot stuck squarely in my mouth. So thank you, Alan Jonah, uh, not only for covering for us on that day, but for his two-year relentless campaign of denigrating and humiliating Grillhard calling her Jew liar to her face and shaming her for her never a carbon tax under a government I lead election promise, leading to the hilarious claim this lie, in fact, made her father die of shame. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> <laughs> you, you all have to understand uh, uh, that... The receptive capacity of the great mass of the people is very limited. Uh, the, their intelligence is small, but their, their faculty for forgetfulness is, is very great. Uh, 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 in light of these facts, any effective propaganda, political campaign, must confine itself to a small number of points and use them as, a, uh, as a slogans repeated continually until everyone understands the intended meaning. So, stop the boats, stop the tax, Jew liar, even hang the witch, drown Bob Brown and his bitch, no health spending, no education spending, no infrastructure spending, no to the NBN. They all work and are all easily remembered by the voters. No, no, stop the tax, what? Stop the boats, what? Drown the witch, more? I thought you couldn't drown witches, that, that they floated. Uh, look, uh, uh, I'll make this simple for you. Uh, now, if I can remember it, I'll try to quote you direct from the manual. Uh, uh, remember, most people react emotionally, so it's not sober reflection, but uh, sensations and feelings that determine thoughts and actions. Feelings which, far from being complex, are, are concise and simple. They, they contain few uh, 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 nuances, but, but a positive side or a negative side, l love or hate, justice or injustice, truth or, or lie, 
So no propaganda campaign can be successful unless uh, it, it takes into account a basic principle, to, to confine itself to as few things and repeat them incessantly. <clears throat> so, so if you're going to tell a lie, then, then tell a big one and repeat it over and over again. Then you'll be amazed by the uh, tremendous inconceivable results such consistency achieves. Remember, say no to everything. Uh, um, I'll be back. <laughs> there he goes, the one and only real and authentically urban nowhere man. He's a real nowhere man living in his nowhere land making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Doesn't have a point of view Knows not where he's going to Isn't he a bit like you and me? Nowhere man, please listen You don't know what you're missing Nowhere man, the world is at your command He's as blind as he can be, knows not what he wants to see. Nowhere man can you see me at all. Nowhere man, don't worry, take your time, don't hurry. Wait alone till someone else lends you a hand. He's a real nowhere man, living in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Making all his nowhere plans for nobody.